As humans, we have the ability to speak and to understand languages. So today I'll teach you the process of speech production. Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Bridget, I'm a English teacher. On this channel, I teach sounds, grammar, compositions, the problematic topics in English language. I also train people who are interested in teaching dictions, oral English, or phonetics in schools. I also train people who are willing to improve on their English speaking skills. I post videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So if you like my videos, remember to like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on the notification bell so that when I drop my videos, you'll watch it till the end. Thank you. Now let's move on to today's topic, which is the process of speech productions. It starts from within. It starts from organs of speech. What are organs of speech? Organs of speech are those parts of the body that enable us to produce speech, to articulate speech. And then we have them in the chest region and in the mouth region. The ones in the chest regions are the lungs, the larynx, and it pro and, pro and progress to the vocal cords and the glottis. Now the ones in the mouth are called articulators. Of course you know the mouth. Now let's move on. Now, what do we call articulators? Articulators are those organs of speech in the mouth. Now, we have the active articulator and the passive articulators. The active articulators are those articulators that can move, that, that are flexible, that can move to touch all other parts of the mouth to articulate sounds. And then the passive articulators are those that don't move, but they, they contribute to the articulation of speech sounds. Now, let's progress to the organs of speech and how we articulate these sounds and speak. Now, the first one is the lungs. The lungs is like two bags in the chest. It is also called the powerhouse because that is where the air comes from. And then when the air goes, comes from the lungs, it moves to the larynx. The larynx is the second organ of speech, which is also called the voice box. It is called the voice box because air is modulated in the voice box and then most people call it adam's apple because it's like a bony structure in the truth it is protruded in some people and it is not protruded in some people now let's move on to the other part of organs of speech the next one is the vocal cords the vocal cords is like two lip like membrane that are attached to the larynx with the muscles now the either contracts or they expand. When it expands, there will no vibration. And when there is no vibration, we have voiceless sounds. But when it contracts, there will be modulate, there will be vibration, and they will produce voiced sounds. The space in between the vocal cords is called the glottis. In the glottis, when there's pressure of air, in the in, in the glottis and then there's a there's an outburst of release it is called glottal stop this is a symbol for glottal stop now let's move on to the next one which is what the soft palate the soft palate is also called the vellum the soft palate is attached to the back of the mouth or attached to the pharynx it could either be raised up or be lowered to articulate sounds now when it is raised up it blocks the nasal cavity, and so we produce oral sounds. Now, when it is raised down, it opens up the nasal cavity, and then we produce the nasal sounds. Examples of the nasal sounds are the mm, oh, mm, and others. Now, let's move on to the next part, which is the hard palate. The hard palate is also called the roof of the mouth. Sounds are also articulated in the hard palate because I want I'm imagining what will come into your mind right now if we articulate sounds using the hard palate. The hard palate is a passive articulator. It is fixed, but the tongue is raised up in order to form contact with it. And when it is raised up, we produce sounds such as ye. For example, we have the word yellow. Yes, you're watching me right now. Now let's move on to the next organ, which is the alveolar. The alveolar is also called the teeth ridge. The teeth ridge 
should be able to give us an idea of what the alveolar means. It is in between the, the hard palate and the teeth. That's um, your gum, that is the one that is in between your gum and your hard palate, where your teeth is attached to. We make sounds by using the, tongue, the tip of the tongue raised to that alveolar, alveolar in order to articulate sounds. And the sounds that we produce are uh. Can you say uh? Yes. We produce a sound from the alveolar ridge. Now let's move on to the tongue. The tongue is the most active articulator that we have. The tongue can move and move around the mouth. The size can be raised up the center. It could move out, it could move backward. And so we have part of the tongue. We have the tip of the tongue, we have a blade, we have the front and the back of the tongue. Now let's, let's move on to now let's move on to the teeth. The teeth is another organ of speech. We, now we have the upper and the lower teeth. While we produce sounds using the teeth, we have the dental sounds or the teetal sounds. Now let's look at this symbol. This is an example of a dental sound. Now how do we articulate it? We bring out our tongue using the tip of the tongue and put it in between the upper and the lower teeth and then we blow little air in it. Now let's do it. We have th as in thank you. Thank you. Now let's move on to the next organ of speech which is the lips. Of course we know how our lips look like. It is outer and then it changes form just the way I've been talking. My lips have been changing forms. Spread rounded it is it could be neutral and so on so when we articulate sounds with them we are able to articulate sounds such as b the lips comes together and what sound do we produce using the lips we call b as in ball now let's move on to the next organ of speech which is the last one for today we have the jaws the jaws is another organ of speech it helps us to move our mouth up or down. It could actually be sentry and closing positions. So when it moves, it enables us to produce our virus and our diphthongs, especially when the sounds glide from one position to the other, and then when it glides from and glides in three sounds, such as your triphthongs. We're going to look at such those sounds in our subsequent videos. Now let's look at all that we've said all through. Now we've looked at what articulators are, articulators, the active articulators and the passive articulators. The active articulators move like the tongue, the leaves, they are active. Now we look at the passive articulators such as the, the hard palate which does not move. Now we look at all these organs of speech and how the air flows through to our articulators in the mouth. Remember the organs in the chest region, that is the lungs, which is the powerhouse. We have the larynx, which is also called the voice box, where the air is modulated, remember? Now we have the vocal cords, we have the glottis, we have the soft palate or vellum, we have the hard palate, which is also called the roof of the mouth, we have the alveolar, we have the tongue, we have the teeth, we have the lips, we have the jaws. So what do you think? In all of this, if you have any contribution, you have comments, please remember to leave it in the comment section and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Turn on the notification bell so that as soon as I drop my videos, you watch it to the end. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.